Hello everyone, my name is Ash, and I don't want to talk about anything else except for Fallout 4. So, if you haven't already watched the trailer, if you did, let's break it down! Join me in this adventure, because we ain't stopping now. I don't know how much I want to credit this, but if we are to believe this is not just for show. There's electricity running through the television here. Spoilers, but it looks like something common out of Fallout 4 is reconstruction. Not just, oh hey, we're dealing with the apocalypse, let's build a civilization again, but a real concentration on restoring what was lost, taking the items of old and retrofitting them to become more powerful than they ever were before. You'll see what I mean later. And I'm not just talking about weapons. I imagine the game environments to be much more lively, especially if a random decrepit house has electricity. Shifting out, there's a little pot that has a green plant. It's the small things that still exist in an environment like this. A blast radius board game, which I don't think we can play, but that's kind of hilarious. There's a Mr. Handy eyeball on the floor next to the overturned leg rest, by the way. And holy crap, it's the old days. Can't say how much pre-war material will actually be in the game, and if this flashback will merit. But considering this is rendered in-game and not a cheesy cinematic, well it kind of is, but you know what I mean, these assets exist. We may see areas that look authentically pre-war, or perhaps even flashbacks to the time before the bombs dropped. Puppy! Not so much to say anything about the fancy kitchen that got old and busted and rusted, but this dog is adorable. Not completely sure, but it kind of looks like the same pup that King had in New Vegas. I'll bet uh, the brain and limbs are still intact. Sugar bombs on the table, so we know that we'll probably be back. And Mr. Handy, the home model. I'm gonna be a huge stickler here and say the color of the bowl changed <laughs> from past to present, but that's neither here nor there. The fact that the dog's still looking for food and there are models for dog bowls has me thinking, will Fallout have us micromanage our dog companion? Have to feed him? Possibly have a spot in our home base to keep her fed? Maybe. The Mr. Handy, <clears throat> excuse me, the incredible multi-talented Mr. Handy box is lying in the corner behind one of the sliding doors. Not a normal swinging door, curiously. Leaves on the ground, tiles scattered, paintings down, just your average day. The same amount of decay that we saw in Fallout 3 in New Vegas, so I imagine we're not far off from the same timeline. Same time frame. Despite the environment itself being sepia and pale in color, there seems to be way more color in this game than the blue and green of Fallout 3 and the orange of New Vegas. Notice the little baby book on the floor? Baby steps. Flashback to Fallout 3 out there. And a literal flashback because we see actual people. I don't know how I feel about the design of the characters. They still look pretty bare in facial attributes, but perhaps this is only a cinematic touch. At first, I thought this was the protagonist's actual house, or at least childhood home, and the protagonist is the baby. Take notice of the mom and dad's clothes. We'll be referencing this later. Sirens. Cameras chasing the dot to give disparity to the house that felt so warming earlier. Reveals the house was somewhere in suburbia as well. But wait, are we actually going to experience the past? Because this entire area is rendered as such. People crying, freaking out in the streets, a tank in the distance on the street, and also a vertebrate up above. The dog moves in a brown lifeless area, so hurrah for more brown again. Or not, as we see the cross of green grass and trees. I'm getting really confused here whether this is merely for show what we saw in the past, or we can actually not only flashback but experience and see the way things used to be. Not in a kind of tranquility kind of thing like Fallout 3, please god no. But speculating even further here, I find it interesting if we started off as an ancestor of our current protagonist 111, played out the time when the bombs dropped in 2077, and then actually fast forward to the future. But that's just me. The metal fence, which seems to be blocked by the military and power armor suits, it definitely leads to the vault as depicted by the billboard ahead showing vault dwellers. Prepare for the future! Happily, as the other people are on the floor crying and lining up, except for that they can't actually get in. Vault 111. Welcome to our ex home, looks like. Instead of being a no-name like in New Vegas, it looks like we're kind of not no-names. We're again a vault dweller. And personally, I'm hoping we hear news from 101 through the radio, just for kicks. 
And I don't know about you, but this kind of really depresses me. I loved the scene where you look out for the first time and it's bright as hell. It's kind of like that fallout... Oh, I don't know how to call it, but anyway, it's kind of ruined here. But oh well. Pip-Boy is on the protagonist's left arm, and the place where the dog had left is from one of the houses that was destroyed near the vault exit. A makeshift community has built around some government buildings, including the Bunker Hill Monument, which shows up here. Electricity hooked up and, well, slightly crumbling. The USS Constitution retrofitted with what looks like jet boosters, sitting on top of what looks like to be a former bank. I'm going to butcher the pronunciation here, but Skole Square, a real place in Boston, more particularly in the 60s, it's either in the 50s or 60s, shows up in this shot. A place called Memory Den, which I imagine is some kind of nightclub, some kind of like club in general, judging by all the signs outside. Not only the marquee outside, but also like one of the drink signs as well. Anyway, also lighted streets and a scantily makeshift camp in the distance. What seems to be the protagonist is a very Detective Dan kind of attire, even the mysterious stranger. The clothes on the man to the left have that Benny slash chairman vibe. I want to point out also that there is weather at this point. A bolt of lightning strikes right as we leave, so it looks like weather will actually randomly generate in this game. Moving on to remote areas, a pack of Brahmin witches back with stuff on top and a man in front of his home. An abandoned bus with two heavily clad soldiers walking. Probably Brotherhood of Steel? They don't look that friendly, and since they're walking in a pair in the middle of nowhere, I would normally say they're scouts or guards. The one on the left is armed, but the other one is just kind of walking with his arms dangling. It's kind of hard to see because unfortunately I'm not using a lossless video, so sadly I can't pinpoint the exact armor. In any case, it's power armor. A pile of bones lays on the floor, so this area hasn't been used for habitation. More specifically, it looks like there's a cage up top. One of those creepy prisons we've seen before where super mutants would put humans in them and then eat them. One of the droids painted yellow in an industrial area with colors still pretty intact. Color being a very common thing here. Noticeably stark yellow and blue cars. The building in the distance says bay then center, but personally I can't pinpoint which location this is in real life Boston. Up here with a creature walking through, I actually don't recognize this creature from the past games. Pincers, what seems to be a near humanoid face? Reminds me of the centaur, but definitely way less creepy. And tonguey. If you have any insight, please let me know. Dog underneath the overpass with a billboard sign in the distance. It's a pre-war brand that you might not realize just yet. Don't worry too much, but let's just say it pops up a lot more noticeably in this trailer. Goddamn death claws in an arid, <laughs> yellow irradiated area. I hate death claws. They are the bane of my existence ever since. But anyway, a vertebrate flies in the area. I wonder whether we can actually fly these, let alone board them, as we keep seeing them. The minigun is intact as well, so who knows if we'll actually not only be able to board vertebrates, but also use the weapons. A grocery store with zombies. Fast frickin' zombies. Okay, I know the actual term is ghouls, but in a grocery store where there are howling pumpkins and skeleton decor decaying, it's only fitting to call them zombies. By the way, the bombs dropped October 23rd, 2077. That's why, well, Halloween. <laughs> Is this Fenway Park? Definitely looks like it. Take a look at the baseball statue in the courtyard, but it seems it's been taken over by raiders. You can see the man with a gas mask, rather torn up and bloodied up armor, and a gun. A woman in the distance with a top that barely looks like anything, so honestly, I would say it's another junkie. If you have any insight to the diamond symbol, and it's not baseball, please <laughs> write in the comments below. Because it's not Enclave, it's not Brotherhood of Steel, or any of the rest. New faction? I hope so. And an Enclave bot. Finally showing up in front of an Enclave endless propaganda poster behind it. Shifting more into the rest of Fenway Park, which now I'm inclined to believe is one of the very important settlements we'll be part of, since it's so lit up. Diamond City Surplus, Commonwealth Weaponry, pay attention to that, Power Noodles, Chem I Care, which is undoubtedly a chem and drug shop, Swatters, which looks like a weapon joint, but is actually a baseball hangout, 
The hood of the building is even a baseball cap. Matter of fact, one of the people here in the front is dressed up like a baseball player. It could be reveling in the old times of baseball, but I'm also inclined to believe that there's a sort of fanaticism that may occur here in the same way that the Kings of Freeside did, in which they threaten their baseball bats around and handle the little economy of their own. A community faction. I think it's fair to notice there is a bodyguard in the middle of the cantina as well, so this is one of the more established settlements, say, similar to Rivet City. They may have their own pre-existing rules. A blimp with Paul Revere statue and the Old North Church lays right in front of us. It's a nice touch, really. These buildings are also intact, though I'm not sure, however, how to gauge exploration in this region. Also, it's interesting to note how there's rain. <laughs> there's rain. I'm still hoping for dynamic weather and not just situational weather. Curious though, with the blimp slash airship, whatever you want to call it, that has a light either searching or scanning the area, looking for something or maintaining the peace. We don't know what faction is running the blimps yet, but we'll probably need to make friends with them. Now, here's context for that torn up billboard from earlier. Gasoline, diesel, fusion. It's Rod Rocket. But specifically, we're in a freaking vertebird with power armor on. Well, we don't know if this is the protagonist or not, but if there are active vehicles, yes, please, yes, please, yes, please. And take a look at the billboards as well. GNN was active here, Galaxy News Network. Not sure if Galaxy News Radio will be present as well, but since Three Dogs voice actor spilled the beans years ago, I imagine he's in this game, and same with GNR. Fallon's billboard, don't recognize the brand, but I hope there will be a few new pre-war companies popping up in this new region. And Nuka-Cola on the right. The Massachusetts State House, which seems very much intact, as well as the other buildings nearby. The roofs don't look like they're inhabited, so I imagine we're still in this sort of like environmental gameplay where sure, we can go inside buildings and even be inside and on multiple floors, but we won't engage with anything to do on the roofs. Understandable because the overworld is already too daunting on data and processing speed, but kind of stinks to be always caught on ground level. Or perhaps I've played too many parkour games like Dying Light as of late, forever grounded. In any case, we see our dog again at the entrance of the vault. I think it's curious to note how we left the vault, considering we seem to go over the entrance to see the suburban houses. A vault elevator? Well, the flashback seems to confirm it so. A power armor, minigun, soldier, and scientist nearby for vault tech. Guy with a laser rifle on the left in light armor. All in all, one of the more interesting vaults, I'd say. The motto says, something within something land within something. Sadly, again, I don't have the lossless version, so I can't exactly make out the words. And the bombs drop, October 23rd, 2077. And if you want to cry more, remember the parents from the beginning of the video? It looks like they didn't make it. They're outside when the bombs drop. On the left is the mom with her blue top and high pants carrying the baby. On the right, the dad with the white top and khakis. Now I'm going to go off the cuff here and not look at my script because I just came up with the idea that it is possible, however, that they are on top of the elevator. So even though that the bombs dropped and it was such a huge impact, if the elevator is still going down, there is a chance that that actually is the family that is going to go into vault like the last set. Maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> They only got wind damage, so if they actually go down and the and the elevator is fine, in any case, there's a chance. Or it could just be to make us sad because a family died. I don't know. In any case, puppy's back and welcome to home base. It looks like our protagonist 111 has been at work reconstructing power armor in an old red rocket garage. Matter of fact, the garage is well cared for. Is there a point for having red rocket show up three times in a trailer? I'm curious. Magazines on a rack, collectible bobblehead. I imagine we can actually pick these up again on the drawers and then cry because we completely missed one. Anyway, ammo, a Gatling gun, and a choice weapon with attachments hanging on the wall to the left. I wonder if this leaves any hints as to how weapon and armor crafting and customization will appear in game. Before, players just kind of went to a weapon bench, slapped a bunch of materials together, and voila! Duct tape sounds means you're done. 
But if they change the way things are constructed, and there's a way to pick apart different types of armor, like how the power armor suit we see is missing its left leg, and the modification to its color, and the left attachment on the arm... Well... Bethesda? Color me intrigued. Finally, we get a shot at the protagonist, or one of them, who most likely will be customizable the same way as the previous games, and the dog's owner. Our player will use a Pip-Boy again, but the most epic part of it all. Let's go, pal. Our protagonist, 111, is voiced. Thank you for watching. My name is Ash. I'm happy as hell for what's to come. And I say that with complete honesty. <laughs> oh, I've been waiting forever. Anyway, the main things to take from this breakdown? Number one, colors of the past and the present. We finally see real flashes of what Fallout Universe looked like whenever it was simply October 23rd, 2077. Not so much happy times, the scenes we see are from the day when the bombs dropped. However, the fact is, we get to see them, and the echoes still remain in Boston, vibrantly more than Washington DC and New Vegas ever did. Number two, the Commonwealth. We'll be able to explore an area still rich in a somewhat pre-war state and richer technology than what we saw in the West. I would not be surprised for a second if we've ended up visiting the famed and mysterious institute, the highly technological organization within the Commonwealth. After finishing the Android quest in Fallout 3, it was inevitable that we would encounter them yet again. And number three, the voice protagonist. If Dragon Age and Mass Effect have taught me anything, this will bring much happiness and simultaneous turmoil to those who don't want an identity crisis with their own 111. And I forgot to write my send-off. So in any case, my name is Ash, Lady Insanity. Thank you for joining me. This is a little bit different, but oh my god, I'm still in the fall of hype. And yeah, stay tuned for more Bethesda news. I will be at the Bethesda showcase. I almost said conference, but it's a showcase. I will be at the Bethesda showcase at E3. If you want to know what's going to happen, please follow me on Twitter as well because I will be tweeting a lot from the theater. Also, if you have any questions on Fallout, put them in the comment section. In any case, my name is Ash. I said that like six million times. I'm so excited. Please stop me right now. Thank you. Have a pleasant day.